The way to stay ahead of the aircraft is to know where the aircraft is going before it goes there. And this technique it, yeah. is going to show you right. how do we do it. It wasn't by accident. And this is the hard part. We want to we want to turn and get lined up with the runway. And what we don't want to do is we don't want to think that we're lined up. And then the closer and closer and closer we get to the runway, the lower we get, the less time we have to get lined up with the runway. We don't want to be just figuring out at that moment, oh, geez, the runway's 200 feet there. I'm over the grass. The runway's off to one side. And so is there a trick to knowing right here which way you might need to make adjustments as soon as you turn if you're on the right side of the runway or the left side of the runway? All right, so does not have anything to do with crabbing. That's a very good question. So your crab angle, if you've got wind coming from this direction, the wind is going to cause the aircraft to have to point in this direction. But that has absolutely nothing to do with whether you're lined up, continuing to stay lined up, or how you line up. So the crab angle is going to affect the yaw, which is the heading. Mm -hmm. That's going to affect your delta wing. So if the wind's blowing this way and you aim your nose straight down the runway, you're going to wind up going off course. And you're going to get further and further and further off course the longer you stay on final without enough proper crab. But that's not even what we're talking about. We're talking about the ability to line up with the runway and read the runway and read your front strut to know if you're getting closer to center down the runway or further from centered and further away from the center line of the runway. And you're gonna be doing this all the way down on final. The moment you turn final, you're gonna start doing this and we're not gonna stop doing it until the aircraft is down and on the ground after the landing. When the wheels touch, that's when we can stop doing this. So I'm gonna be practicing the technique I'm telling you about even in the flare. And that's how you'll see sometimes I come in for a flare and I'm you know, two feet off the center line. And the next thing you know, my nose wheel's touching down right on the center line. Why? Because I'm using a technique that is constantly correcting for center line. So here's how it works. About Where do your eyes need to be 90% of the time when you're flying the trike? Horizon. Horizon, that's right. So our horizon, it's a nice horizontal line where the sky meets the earth. And then sometimes when you get so low, you're going to lose the horizon as you get below, you know, 50 feet or whatever, it depends where you're at. You may just have the tree line, the tops of the trees, that becomes your new horizon. But you need to be aware of your horizon at all times. I see guys making turns and they're looking down and they have no concept what the aircraft is doing. It's diving towards the ground. Yeah. Overbanking, it's the equivalent of picking up a french fry off of your floor right. and expecting it to come up in the same lane at 80 miles per hour. Right. Just yeah, stop driving the car. If you're gonna look down and grab that, come up and then take control again because the car will do a better job staying in its own lane right. than you will when you're not looking out down the highway. And it's the same thing when you're flying the trike. You're better off just letting go of the controls if you're gonna look down at the ground and then come back and fly the aircraft because you cannot fly the aircraft effectively looking elsewhere. Your eyes have to be on the horizon. Your front strut is your number one tool. This is our front strut in this example. I'm always comparing, I'm always comparing the front strut to the horizon. That's, and so, yeah. when my front strut, I'm going to go ahead and draw it here. When my front strut is 90 degrees to the horizon, I can assume that I'm going straight. And regardless of crab, what we're talking about is if I'm heading due north and my strut is 90 degrees to the horizon, all things being equal, we're gonna continue to go north. Now we might be going northwest because the wind's coming right. you know, out of the east pushing us west. That won't indicate if you're being pushed. That won't indicate that, but what it will do is it'll keep you going in the same direction that you were going. Right. And if there is no wind, you will actually be tracking the same direction, but that's not even important. The thing that we want to be aware of is we want to be aware of when this isn't 90 degrees. We want to be aware of when our front strut is leaned over as little as 2, 3 degrees, certainly 5 degrees to the horizon. So in this case, 
Now all of a sudden, we don't have 90, we've got 85 degrees. Mm -hmm. You got an 85 degree to the horizon, your aircraft is going to not only start to change headings to the left, but if you just leave it in that state, you're going to make a circle. How right, big the circle right. is is based on how right. fast you're going. Right. I understand. You're going to literally come all the way back around. You're going nowhere but in a circle with any amount of bank angle. And so when I see this, let's say the student is perfectly lined up on the runway and we've got a nice 90 degree and everything's looking good, and all of a sudden I see this 85 degree angle in the strut. Now they're looking at the runway, they're looking at their gauges maybe, they're looking everywhere but where they should be, which is to see their front strut is no longer 90 degrees to the horizon. They are unaware that the aircraft is going to start to move at wow. least to the left, let alone it'll continue to just depart the runway. Uh, but they'll notice it as all of a sudden, well I'm way over the left, uh, the grass on the left side of the runway now, they're going to notice that and they'll, they'll bring it back. But why wait until it's so obvious that you're no longer centered with the runway? We want to stay ahead of the aircraft. You know, the saying goes, you're either ahead of the aircraft or you're behind the aircraft. So the way to stay ahead of the aircraft is to know where the aircraft is going before it goes there. And this technique it, yeah. is going to show you. It is the most effective tool on the whole aircraft. And of course, some of our aircraft don't have it. Um, but in the meanwhile, when you're training, you're going to use it because it's right there. If that thing's leaning, it's telling you something. It's telling you it's going that direction. And you're not going to see the effects of it right away. So if you're more or less lined up, you want to keep your bank angles less than 5 degrees or at 5 degrees. As soon as you go to 10 degrees, 15 degrees, you can expect a yaw change, which means now you're going to have to make an S-turn to, and maybe you're so far off where you need an S-turn, but if you're more or less lined up with the runway, you do not want to introduce S-turns into your approach to get right. centered. So five degrees and wait, five degrees will tend to slide you over more okay. uh, versus That's making this coming yeah, in. And you're going this way and this way, it's because you're using Two larger than five degree bank angles. When so, you need to move over to the right, you need to put that five degrees in, and then you need to wait, and you need to trust that that five degrees is gonna move you over. Instead you, of putting in a... You don't wanna put in that second input right. and tilt more because you didn't see the effect happening right. fast enough. That's so bank angle times time stretch, yeah. equals uh, uh, direction change, heading change, where you wanna go. So that's how you read the aircraft. Very, very simple. Now, most people don't know that, that are flying trikes, which is kind of scary because they're working so much harder to do it and they're doing it and they don't really know exactly how they're doing it. Right. Once you realize how you're doing it, you can do it better. Now, there's no trike in this picture, but from our perspective that we're all looking at this board right now, what side of the runway are we on? Do you know? We're on the right side of the runway. We're on the right side of the runway. The reason that we know that we're on the right side of the runway <laughs> is because if we take a straight line, so you gotta use a little imagination, we're gonna go ahead, let's see if I can do this, and we're gonna extend that runway through the horizon. It helps if you close one eye in real life, and a 2D picture, of course, you can just look at it with both eyes. But if you're not sure, close one eye, and then imagine that you're looking at a photograph of what you're looking at, and extend your center line of that runway through the horizon, and now we want to measure the angle. Do we have 90 degrees, or do we have like 88 degrees? And if you can see that it's not quite 90 degrees... You're going to start drifting. Well, no. Uh, you might be drifting to the left. You may be centering the uh, aircraft right now. We may be in the process of lining up, but what we know is at this particular moment in time, we are on the right side of the runway. We know this because the center line, if you extend it through the horizon, is not 90 degrees, and then which way is it leaning? So if that line is leaning to the right, you are on the right. If it's the other way, then you're on the left. So what I can tell you is that when I'm with a student and I see this picture, first thing I know in the back seat, 
we're on the right side. Second thing is, I know that the student's front strut better look like this. And, you know, don't get too caught up with the angle, but we want it something that is to the left. And so when I see a student's front strut look like this, I can assess immediately, without continuing to watch how things progress, that this problem is going to get worse and worse and worse. In other words, if the runway is leaning to the right and the front strut is leaning to the right, the problem is getting worse. Doesn't matter, doesn't matter what your direction is. This is a point in time. Okay. When I open up my eyes and I see this, it doesn't mean anything about your direction of flight path. We're not talking about the green line right now. Okay. When I look at the runway, it tells us that we are in fact to the right of the runway. Now we might be going 90 degrees to the runway. We might be on a right base when I look at this and you're in the process of turning final. All I know is that we are in fact on the right of the runway at this time. If you drew a straight line and then look straight down, you would see the line is to our left. That's okay. what that means. Yep. So if the runway looks more like this, you start to see a bigger angle there and you might have uh, just an 80 degree angle and you're way off to the right. That's a heavy. When you're perfectly lined up, you actually won't have 90. If you look at the, the right side of the runway, you'll probably have about a 91 this way. And the left side, you'll probably have about a 91 this way. And then if you extend the center line of the runway, that's where you're gonna get that right angle. You're gonna get that 90 degree angle through the horizon. So the whole time that we're coming in for a landing, I'm reevaluating the runway, the angle of the runway, which tells me if I'm on the right or the left, and I'm reevaluating my front strut, which tells me if I'm in the process of going to the right or going to the left. So the lower that we get to the runway, the more the picture of the runway starts to change. What do I mean by that? So this one here, we were, you know, half a mile out looking down at the runway from a thousand feet. But as we get lower, what color is I making the runway red? As we get lower, the runway is now going to start to look like this. Okay. And so it's the runway is going to flatten out to the point where as you're landing, that runway is going to look more like this. However, the ability to really use your imagination and run that center line, that center line from the runway, if it were to go through the horizon, it's leaning to the right. It's leaning to the right, which means that we are somewhere over here. And we want to go this way. The way we're going to do it is we're going to lean our front strut to the left. And then what you will see from that is you will see this turn, turn in. I get it. 90 degrees. So it didn't click till you told me running the line out and you can. Yep. I can be on a two mile final. I can be on a five mile final and see it. And so we can get lined up, stay lined up. And then you have to continue to evaluate right. if you're lined up all the way down. And by the time you get just a couple of feet off the ground in the middle of your flare, if you see that you're off to the right side of the center line, you're going to tilt your front strut five degrees. And whether now you're in the middle of your flare, if you have enough time to fly it to right. make it work, is to be determined. What we're probably not going to want to do is go more than five degrees in the flare, go 10, 15, 20 degrees, which can be done. But again, we're just trying to make this easy. Yeah. And what's easy is five degree bank angles during final, during the landing process, during the flare, which we haven't gotten there yet. But you're going to use that angle 
at all times, and you're going to be evaluating at the that, two. At that point, what, what kind of an input are you giving? you got to come over five degrees. Well, that should be something that we should have covered early, early on, which is what does it take? Now, in some aircraft, to get five degrees, you may have to move the controls and wait. Um, in the Revo with the 12-meter oh, wing, like this. don't move the bar side to side. Right. We're going to, in the Revo, we're going to just give a little squeeze okay. on our right finger. That's going to bank us over input. five degrees. Gotcha. And um, you know, for you know, for big inputs, moving the controls can give you nice big bank angles. But when we want fine control, I actually prefer to simply twist the control bar, and then watch, wait, and get the bank angle I want. So your fine control is going to be usually a twist versus moving the controls to give you something that's larger than just a fine control. Because yeah. if we're using this technique, you're practicing all the way down, inputting in five degrees and holding. And this is something you were having a little bit of trouble with the other day, was you would put in the input when we were tracking the roads, no. and the next thing you know, the input was backwards. So you put it in, but because of turbulence or whatever, the next thing you know, it's, it's, it's the other way. Now, where am I looking? right here. Larry's looking at horizon, measuring that angle, going, hmm, we're supposed to be angled to the right, and here we are angled to the left three seconds later. And by the way, these low bank angles take about three seconds just to activate. So when you're coming in and you see, and you're all perfectly lined up and you see your front strut bank, oh, even five, 10 degrees to the left, you can bring that back to straight without any ill effects because when you, w whether you put in five degrees or whether you accidentally get five degrees, there's about a three second delay before the aircraft is gonna really start doing something with that. So you don't have to be so super jittery if you see the aircraft lean. What are you saying there? You can That's just right. take your time, so long as you can bring it back within three seconds, the plane's gone nowhere. Right. But by the same token, if you wanna move over to the right and you put in the five degrees and within three seconds that bank has removed itself somehow you've done nothing right. so <laughs> we need to hold it there we need to be aware we need to focus on everything but we need to be watching this and keeping this and continuing and now all of a sudden we're getting lateral movement across the runway and then you put in your correction to stop it or you Yep, and the lower you get to the runway, the more you'll realize when you do get it moving across the runway, you're going to take it out, and the aircraft's going to move a little bit more. Right. And again, we're starting to talk about how do you get that nose wheel right down on the center line at that point. But for right now, we're talking about low flybys, staying lined up. When we finally get down to the runway, hey, we're over the center line. We're not over the grass. Right. How do we do it? It wasn't by accident. We've been centering ourselves from the moment we turn final, we're centering ourselves all the way down. Most pilots that don't understand this trick are going to think that they're lined up. It seems like they're lined up. I can remember telling my dad, who taught me to fly, Dad, I'm lined up because you need to get over to the left. Dad, I'm perfectly lined up. <laughs> okay, son. But he's, uh... And sure enough, as I get down close enough to the runway, oh, I guess he was right. I'm going to move over. How did he know? Well, either from experience or from understanding this optical trick. But uh, that's how you do it. So when we talk about get your front strut perpendicular, is the runway leaning, this is what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. But the biggest thing that'll screw you up, especially when you're coming in for a landing, is the aircraft starts to drift to the right and you'll lean your body to the left just naturally because you want the aircraft to go to the left. When you lean your body to the left, you lose the ability, because we want to pull on our left hand, to right the aircraft, to bring the aircraft to the left. So it's very important. If you don't like the attitude or bank angle that you're in, fix the carriage, not your body.